And on Q2, teaming up to bring down crime. It's easy to talk about the problem, but let's start working together to be part of the solution. With violence in the community on the rise recently, one local business is doing its part to help bring a stop to it. Plus, in the holiday spirit. Getting in the mood is really the most important thing, and it really doesn't take much for my brother and I to get in the Christmas spirit. Billings Brothers go all out decorating for Christmas. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Our top story, violent crime, has been in the community spotlight now for a few months. Billings is fresh off one of its deadliest stretches in the city's history. When the Magic City saw six shootings in just 15 days, five of them resulting in deaths. But overall this year, Billings police say the crime stats tell a different story, with most of the numbers down from 2022. Tonight, our Charlie Kleps dives into the latest data. The life of a law enforcement employee isn't easy, but today they received a little appreciation at every Tops location in Billings, who partnered with Performance Engineering to help offer them free lunch. We're 365 seven days a week. The life of a law enforcement officer is demanding. We're taxed at the end of the day. Full of trauma and horrifying crime scenes. So you can go to a fatal car crash and then turn around and have to deal with some of its, you know, having a, a suicide crisis and then having to deal with, you know, a, a domestic violence situation and just the, the, the toll it has on us mentally. It's a lifestyle Billings Police Sergeant Jeff Stovall understands well and a big reason why Thanks this so free lunch. Thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate you guys. Means so much to him. It warms our heart. You know, it, it's one of those things that it motivates us to keep doing every day. The small gesture is a sign of appreciation from two local businesses offered at the end of what's been a challenging year for BPD. The city saw 12 homicides in 2023, the same as in 2022, but many this year involved teenagers. The youngest victim, just one year old today, Jake Morrison died when his father was shot and fell on top of him. One of five homicides in just a 15 day span. It takes a huge toll on us because, um, you know, a lot of us are parents and then it relates, it brings it back home for you. We're human beings and that's the, the balance that we have to learn as, as police officers is dealing with that. While those high profile crimes are tough on officers, some violent crime was actually down in 2023, including a decrease in assaults with a weapon with 268 reported down from 340 a year ago. Just a part of the job, but it doesn't go unnoticed. They do a very hard job and it can be a thankless job. Uh, so we appreciate them, man. They're amazing. We're behind you and we support you. And it's just a small, a small fraction of, of what we should be doing to try to support our, our law enforcement community. A small gesture, but one that goes a long way. You don't get into law enforcement for any other reason that you want to change your community and you want to leave it better than where you found it. So that's where our heart's at. And this is a, this is, it's felt, you know, the thank you from the community today. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. The mayor of Joliet facing felony charges for allegedly holding a gun beneath a woman's chin. Dakota Mitchum, who also serves as the town's postmaster, is facing felony assault with a weapon. Court documents say the charges stem from an incident on Sunday on 2nd Street in Joliet. Two Carbon County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to a domestic disturbance at a residence. A woman at the home said Mitchum threatened her with a gun, telling her, I have the kids. He faces 20 years in prison. For the second time this year, Montana State University is facing a federal investigation for discrimination. The Daily Montanan reports the complainant alleges the school discriminated against Jewish and female students after MSU failed to respond to allegations of harassment on the basis of origin and harassment on the basis of sex. Before this investigation, back in October, a federal agency informed the MSU president about over 20 complaints, saying the university failed to respond to threats against the Campus Queer Straight Alliance Group, which supports LGBTQ plus students. The Colorado Supreme Court has dealt former President Donald Trump a legal blow after declaring he's ineligible to be placed on the state's primary ballot for president. The move sets up a legal challenge that's likely to make its way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. Former President Donald Trump told voters in Iowa Tuesday that he has plans for when he gets back to the White House. We will throw off the sick 
political class that hates our country. But Colorado's Supreme Court has cast doubt on Trump's ability to be president again. The court declared Trump is ineligible to run again in that state, citing the Constitution's insurrection clause. That clause disqualifies officers of the United States who have engaged in insurrection or rebellion from holding office. Walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol. The Colorado court ruled four to three that Trump's actions on January 6th disqualify him to hold office again. Trump is planning to appeal the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. We're likely to get a, a decision from the United States Supreme Court sooner rather than later. The full impact on the 2024 election won't be known until the Supreme Court weighs in. But Republicans CBS News has already spoken to all say the decision should be theirs and not Colorado's Supreme Court. I don't think individual states should be with the power to take that away. Haley Cooper was on hand to hear Nikki Haley speak. When she I agreed that Trump this is an overreach by the court. I don't think Donald Trump needs to be president. I think I need to be president. I think that's good for the country. But I will beat him fair in school. We don't need to have judges making these decisions. We need voters to have to make these decisions. Iowa voters will be the first to weigh in, with the caucuses less than a month away. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. A new high-speed tram is unveiled at Big Sky Resort, the most recent one to be built in the United States since Jackson Hole got its. The old tram, installed 28 years ago, only held 15 people. Well, these new cabins can hold as many as 70, traveling twice as fast as any other lift at Big Sky. Taylor Middleton began his career at Big Sky 42 years ago and now serves as the president and COO. He's been lucky enough to have seen the construction of two trams at Big Sky. Big Sky has been working its way toward a position of one of the best ski areas in the United States and North America and the world for many years. What does this trail mean? It positions us as one of those resorts, certainly. Middleton says the new tram will open up more possibilities for the resort, one that already has 320 runs and nearly 6,000 skiable acres. We're getting closer and closer to the end of December and the end of autumn, but it certainly didn't feel like it today. It didn't look like it either. We had a lot of sunshine, some clouds here and there, and most of us didn't have a lot of wind to worry about. But there are some changes, not only with the weather, but with the seasons as well. We're still going to have mild weather for December. Keep my eyes on that for you right now through tomorrow. It's going to be very mild Thursday afternoon. However, Thursday evening, 827 p.m. is the instant that we go from autumn to winter. It's not going to feel like winter just yet because we do have more mild air. However, there are some changes getting closer as Christmas itself gets closer. Even a chance for some lower elevation snow. Our seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Students Billings School District 2 will soon be receiving an early Christmas gift. It's all thanks to the Scottish Rites who kept this tradition going, donating 888 pairs of shoes. Those shoes will get sent across the district to students who need them the most this holiday season. The group purchased the shoes from stores around town and School District 2 Superintendent Dr. Irwin Garcia was there to help count out the donations. We have about 600 homeless students 250 foster care kids, and um, and that is not even counting kids that are in poverty. So, very excited about partnering with the Scottish Rite, doing the, you know, such a kind donation for a community. It's a wonderful feeling to give is much better than to receive, as the old saying goes, and to see a smile on a kid's face with a new pair of shoes as they bounce on their feet, bounce and headed out. It's great. The act of giving out those shoes began in 1994, and they have donated over 40,000 pairs of shoes since. Those in need can still receive shoes year-round at no cost. You probably put a lot of time into decorating for the holidays, but probably not as much as these two Billings brothers. They start several weeks before Thanksgiving. Our Russ Riesinger found out why it's such an important tradition. <music> Some people go all out decorating for the holidays and others take it to a whole other level. Here we go. Welcome to our winter wonderland. <laughs> Kevin Barr and his twin brother Ken fall into the latter category. Every year they go all out for Christmas. All out. We try to come up with different ideas and different <clears throat> arrangements. And so this is kind of what happened this year. 
They typically start decorating on November 1st. Getting in the mood is really the most important thing, and it really doesn't take much for my brother and I to get in the Christmas spirit. And that, as you can see, is pretty obvious. We just enjoy it, so it's a lot of work, but, you know, we love it. We like being creative, and we, the neighbor was trimming his branches, and I <laughs> went back and grabbed the branch, and now it's part of the uh, a scenery up here. Those are actually vintage drums. <laughs> Over the years, their Christmas collection has grown considerably. We probably do two or three trees a day or during the, you know, during the week. But there's 12 trees, five of them over 12 feet. Yeah, so that was the last count, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I come home and my brother Ken has a new one set up, so <laughs> unbeknownst, that's all right. So you may be wondering why these guys decorate the way they do. Well, the tradition was started about 25 years ago by Kevin's late spouse, Larry, who passed away in 2021. This really helps me in the grieving process, I think, um, to, you know, set up this, what he loved. And uh, I, you know... I hope I did them good. <laughs> so, <did>. yeah. <laughs> Keeping a holiday tradition alive, one that won't be easy to top next year. You know, I kind of ask myself that every year, and somehow we do it. So, uh, it's just a good thing that both of us enjoy it. So, and then, it, hopefully, it brings right? a lot of joy to yeah. a lot of our friends, our neighbors, our family. So, there we go. Merry Christmas. In Billings, Russ Riesinger, MTN News. Good